Thank you very much, uh, Simon. Uh, like Simon said, my name is uh, Magnus de Wett. I'm from a company called Vista Wealth Management. Uh, it's quite a big privilege for me to be back here tonight. I see a lot of I see a lot of guys in the audience. Uh, for me, it was like coming home tonight. Uh, I spent 12 years of my life uh, here at the JC. This is where I learned all about finances um, right here in this building. So it was quite nice to come back to the mothership tonight. Uh, uh, always good uh, Vista Wealth Management, uh, and what, what I'm presenting tonight is a listed property versus buy to let property. Um, just a little bit of background where this comes from. Uh, Vista Wealth Management is a, is a wealth management firm. So what we do is we work with uh, people's money. And uh, what often happened or what, what was happening was we had a lot of clients that approached us with they had some sort of a windfall or they, um, they were retiring or moving jobs and they had some money. And the question always come, came to us to say, what should I do with this money? Should I be investing it in the markets or should I be investing it into a buy-to-let property? Buy-to-let properties, uh, South Africans for some reason is fascinated about it. Uh, I don't know what it is about us. Maybe it's the physical, the, the bricks and mortar, but fascinated about it. And, and being financial advisors, we can't just thumb suck and say this investment's better than that. So what, what it came down to is we had to start building a model that basically said, um, this is what, what the return would be on your buy to let property versus some sort of other uh, investment that we do in the markets. Um, so to build this model, we, also, we, 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 we had to take a lot of uh, um, variables into consideration. Uh, you know, it's amortization loans because usually uh, the buy to let property is financed through a mortgage from the bank to over 20 years. Um, and then once we've built this model to actually uh, uh, calculate the returns that you will be getting on your on your on your property portfolio or your, your, your buy to let property, then we had to say, OK, well, that versus something else. What do we compare it to? Because you want to know advice on which way is the best way to actually invest your hard earned cash. So, um, so that's when we then started building this model. Um, we eventually, we, we advised our client that initially at the request and, and we did the whole thing. And then we thought, we've got this model. Uh, what do we do now with it? So, so eventually we decided, well, let's, let's write an article. We wrote an article for FinWeek. FinWeek uh, published it. It got published in January 2017. And just on that point, we did bring a couple of uh, printouts of the article, but it's already been, uh, it's already out. So. Um, there's a there's a little uh, a list. I beg your pardon. There's a few left still, but there's a there's also a list that will just be, go, be going past. What we'll be doing is also we'll, if you put your name and your email address on the list, we will email it to you the the article electronic format and also the the model that we build. It's a so you can also play with this model and actually build your own analysis to find out what would be a better investment for you. Um, so yeah, and and. Then after the article, Finweek was very happy. The the social the, it, it it almost went viral. It was an extremely popular article. And then we thought, well, what's the next step? And like I said, coming back to the mothership, and here we are tonight presenting to you guys about the what what our findings was with regards to uh, buy to let property versus listed property. So that's just a bit of a background and an introduction uh, to the whole thing. Just the agenda, how the presentation works. Uh, the presentation is uh, in two, two basic sections. The first one is where we actually explain the model. I'll go through all the different variables, uh, doing the comparison, and then what was our findings from it, which one, which one came out top, so listed property or buy to let property. And then um, some of the general questions that we've had from, from the analysis and, and the research that we've done with regards to it. Uh, we've, uh, some of the questions, then I'll just go through and those are the ones at the bottom under the general section. Okay, any questions at this time? Everybody happy, sorted, understand how it's gonna be? Okay, great stuff. So firstly, just as we're now going into the model, I just wanna firstly define what did we mean by a buy to let a, a property. In our model and where our analysis came from, it was a residential property, which an investor would buy into with a small deposit and a mortgage loan from the bank. So he would finance it by a, a mortgage with the bank. He, he'll put down a little deposit. Then what he'll do is he'll get a tenant to actually rent the property from him. And in the process, he'll receive monthly payments and he'll pay off an asset that he would eventually then sell. 
So that's the idea of a buy to let property. When we started going into the uh, um, the investment, we found it is not as straightforward as a as a normal investment on the JSC. It has ex so many parameters and so many variables that you have to keep in mind when you're building. So when we when we started building the model, we said from the word go, it needs to be a variable, uh, parameterized, um, so that we can tweak it because every one of our investors has got a different. Even the one that started the whole question, uh, not only at one buy to let property that he was looking, at, he was looking at a couple of buy to let properties, and we had to build this model that it's variable and you can plug and play. So we started. On, on the left-hand side of this table, and sorry, I know it's a lot of information, but this is really, if you are serious about buy to let property, these are all the variables that you need to keep in mind and that you need to, to, to work on when you're actually calculating where to invest your money. Um, like I said, don't worry about writing it all down or anything like that. We will be providing, if you just put your name on, we will email you the actual spreadsheet that, that has the model in it, and you can go and play and configure it according to yourself. But I'm just going to quickly, high level, explain to you um, the variables that we then used and the actual input parameters that we used when we then actually built and, and, and wrote the article and, and gave out the advice. So the first one was, um, what should, what should the, the initial value of the property, the, the, the buy to let property, when you buy it, what is the sort of value that you're looking at? Uh, the initial v uh, investor had values all the way from 750,000 up to about 1.25 million. So we just, we just for, for, for this analysis, we just said, in this uh, example, it is a 1 million rand uh, a, a, a property that you buy uh, with a mortgage loan from the bank of a 20 years mortgage loan and a 10% uh, uh, deposit that you would have to um, put down. So on your 1 million rand, you would now have to put down 100,000 rand and you would get 900,000 rand loan for that property. Then, um, then obviously the bank's not gonna give you the money for free. There's an interest rate uh, um, that you would have to pay on this interest rate. Then that was also another big debate. What interest rate should we be using? Uh, we went back in time, we went back about 20 years to go and look what was the average prime interest rate over the last uh, 20 years. And uh, I've got a little reward for somebody that could guess it. Any guesses, if I can just ask, any guesses what's the average uh, prime interest rate for the last 20 years from about 1995? There we go. 7%. No, it's a bit higher. Good effort. 13, I heard. Was it you, sir? There we go. Here's a little gift for you. <laughs> this is a this is a little sleeve. You put it on your back and your phone, and you put your cash and your cards in there. Yeah. So good good questions. I'll be will will be rewarding tonight as well. So please fire away and keep it interactive. But yeah, it's 13 uh, percent. If you go back to like 1998, the the prime interest rate was as high as 25.5 percent. So very very high. Um, but we we eventually for our model we just said. Well, it was before the before the downgrades came, and we said, okay, well, it, it was uh, its prime is 10.5 percent. It was probably going to be reduced before uh, before the whole circus started. Um, so we worked with a 10 percent on the model, but again, it is configurable. Uh, your first year rental income that you would re be receiving from the property. So on this property, we said uh, 10 percent of the initial value. So if the property is uh, 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 1 million rand, we said for the in the first year, you will receive 10%. So 100,000 Rand within the first year, which works out about 8,300 8, Rand uh, per month that you would be receiving as a rental income on this buy to let property that you now bought and got a tenant in. So that's what we worked at there. Um, then we had to increase every year, you have to increase rent. That is another heated uh, topic on its own. Um, inflation, we worked eventually with inflation, but I think we all agree everybody that's in, in the game and has buy to let property. And can I just ask by a show of hands, is there anybody in the audience that, that has buy to let property? Okay, so, so don't worry myself, I've, I've also got it, so it's, uh, don't, don't worry about it. That's, uh, but yeah, but I think we all know 6% is a pipe dream, you can't really escalate your rent with your, for your tenant uh, every year by inflation. So, um, but we did in the model, we gave it the benefit of the doubt and we worked with a 6% inflation for increasing the rent that you ask. Um, and then also the property value has to increase on a, on a yearly basis. Here we looked at APSA, has got a property index where they actually calculate the, 
the, the, the, the property prices over the, the last 20 years. And the, and the average uh, property price, not in the last couple of years, but going back about 20 years, in, in general, would be about 8-9%. Um, but also, it's very region-specific. Um, and we'll talk about it a bit later, but, but in the Western Cape, buy to let property is be, definitely a better in, investment than these days in Gauteng. But anyways, for the model, we, we worked on 10% again. Maintenance, we worked at as, as a percentage of 0.2% of the property value per year. So that's also, we kept it very low. Le levies, rates, taxes, all the expenses that a tenant wouldn't pay. We, we also um, included as a 2% uh, of the property value per year. Um, and then buying and selling of the property. Obviously, when you buy or sell a property, there's, there's cost involved. Um, with a buy to let property, it is, it, or with any physical property, it is high. It's your conveyance in your bond registration, all of those sort of things. It works out. Uh, on this 1 million rand property, it worked out to almost 60,000 rand, which works to about 5.8%. And then on the selling again, your estate agent fees, etc., comes from the seller, and that would be 5.3%. And then the last one, which a lot of uh, um, buy to let uh, property investors forget, is the fact that on the, on the rental income that you know, now you've got this property and you've financed from the bank and you put a tenant in there and now you start receiving these this in this example 8,300 rand rental income on a monthly basis from your tenant now if you forgot to actually pay income tax so remember that's part of your income tax for this model and for this client it was it was before the super tax so we just worked on 41 percent there but now with the super tax it could be as high as 45 percent of that rental income that you actually receive that, that needs to um, that you need to pay taxes on. So these were I know this is quite a busy slide. And I'm glad we're over and done with it. Is there any questions on it? Because it, it's it's the most wording. Yes, sir. Good point. We we didn't put that in, and it, and and it's a good point. We didn't. We but we left it out on the comparison on both sides. So we said if we leave it out both sides, it should be fine. But these variables we had to leave in on the buy to let property side because it was only applicable to. Them. But it is a very good point. Um, can I give you a sleeve there? <laughs> it's just uh, you'll go and click. Thank you. Okay, so that's 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 a good point. So we didn't put in the when you when you actually sell the property, the capital gains that you will be paying on that. Um, then to continue on the model, these are some of the variables we did not include. So if you are in this game again, you have to be cognizant of this. This is uh, we left it out because one, this is uh, very subjective to the area and the type of investment and things like that. And if you get it wrong. It is a terrible investment, and you can just as well write it off. So we left it off uh, on purpose. The first one was non-paying tenants. Um, there's, a, there's a website called the Tenant Profile Network, 10 TPN. If you go and read up on there, and they do analysis about property in South Africa and the investment, they reckon about 15% of buy-to-let property uh, owners don't receive their, their uh, um, uh, income, their, their rent on a, month, on a monthly basis. So 15% of that, and then also if you've got a bad tenant, to actually get the tenant evicted. So this is also coming to uh, Simon's point, tenants, <laughs> property is very nice, but tenants are terrible. But anyway, so um, we didn't include it. Like I said, it is excluded from our model, it's excluded from our comparison. But if you want to build it in, you can build it in. But when we build it in, it just threw it out immediately, there was no business case. Uh, the next one was external factors like rising interest rates. We chatted about the, the prime interest rate in 1998 at 25.5%. These are, these are factors. If the interest rate, you can't just move it onto your tenant. You're in a, in a rental agreement or, you know, there's, there's a certain business case to have it. So if these external factors happen, you're in a degrading area, um, it, it happens overnight and you're sitting with a, with, a, with a bad, but we didn't include it. The next one was non-diversification. Anybody investing knows the only free lunch in investing is diversification. And therefore, um, you have to, by having a property in, um, in Morningside and another one in Melville, doesn't really, it doesn't really d d diversify. You're still in the same asset class, in the same city. So it's not really diversification. And then um, rent escalations. We worked on inflation, but like I said to you, that it's nowhere. If it's 3% per year that you can escalate your rent, that is actually quite high. So these were risks that we actually excluded from the model. But in your own analysis, think about it. Uh, I, I, I don't think anybody wants to be there, but those risks were excluded. 
But then on the positive side, the following benefits were also excluded from the analysis. We didn't take into account that a lot of people work in the industry. So um, you might be an estate agent or uh, you, you know properties and you, you find this absolute pull, this, this stellar of an investment property at a, at a steal. Um, then obviously that would make business sense for you. So that's what we meant by working in the industry. Tax efficiency, if you've got a few uh, buy to let properties, what you can do is you can, you can finance your own home, for example, by, by using the capital from the home loans uh, that you've got on the buy to let properties to finance your own uh, house, not have a bond on your own house, and then also in the process keep up the, 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 the interest rate, which is the expense that you can take off uh, from your profits um, before you pay income tax, which makes it tax efficient. You're basically creating a tax shield for yourself um, uh, by, not, by, by upping them or using the capital from the buy to let properties to actually finance your own properties or, or lifestyle. Um, undisciplined savers. So, so we work, um, unfortunately, we, we also, we've got a couple of clients that just, they're just not savers. They just can't get that money every month into the bank for an, an investment. So, but for some reason, the fact that there's a loan from the bank and the bank can come and take back that property makes some people save. They, every month the money is there and, and the, the homeland gets paid off. So it helps some people that, 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 that needs help of saving to actually save. And then um, uh, lastly, if you run a, a buy to let property as a business where you, um, where you t keep track of your, your travel expenses, your, your cell phone expenses, and you write all of these things off, it could, be a, it could be a profitable business. Again, we didn't take these factors into, but it is technical benefits that you need to keep in mind when you're doing your own analysis. Okay, so any, any questions on that slide? Is everybody okay there? So, so that was the buy to let side. Now we've, we know what a buy to let property looks like. We know all the variables that we're gonna use. Now we need to compare it to something. And, and for this, we said we're going to compare it. We wanted to compare it to uh, something that's similar. We could have just said the, the all Z40 or whatever, but we said we want to compare it to listed property because that's sort of property compared to property because if you had to take your 100,000 Rand either into the buy to let or you put your 100,000 Rand into the listed property, then this is, this is the definition. It was the JSE's FTSE, uh, JSE listed uh, property index. Very importantly is that little word, to its total return. It's a total return index. Anybody uh, familiar with the term? Anybody wants to take a chance and explain what a total return is? Total return index? There we go, sir. I beg your pardon. Capital and income. So the income that you're receiving from your dividends gets reinvested. And that is extremely, that is key, key, key. Steve, oh, sorry, yes. <laughs> sorry, I was, I was going for it. There we go. Almost thought your name is Steve. There's your sleeve. <laughs> okay. Good. Good question. Good answer. Thanks. But yeah, it, it is key. It's key that you actually um, that you reinvest that dividends that you receive, specifically on listed property. The big thing that you that you do when you're buying into listed property is you're buying into that dividends. That dividend yield is absolutely key, and it's key. I'll show you a graph now. What happens if you don't return it? Um, uh, it comprises of the top 20 most liquid um, um, companies according to full market capitalization on the JSE. So, so the index consists of 20 uh, constituents. It needs to be part of those two sectors, and it must be primary listed on the JSE. So that's the criteria to be part of the listed property index on the JSE, and that's the index that we use to compare back on to the buy-to-let property. Again, I'm not going to go through this, but this is if you want to know the 20 names of the index, there's the names. The, the usual suspects up there, Growth Point, Redefined, those are the two big ones in the index. Uh, growth Point's got 19.2% of the weight goes to Growth Point. Redefined is 14.8%. So in that index, that's the weighting that those two shares carry. Uh, almost 35% that, that, that those two. But there's the rest of the names, plus their weightings going down over there. Uh, the smallest is uh, Liberty 2 degrees, currently only at a half percent contribute to the weighting of that. They make up the, the listed property index. Sorry, I don't know what happened there. Um, then each of these, what, are, what is the dividend yield? There you can see the dividend yield on these shares. 7.3% for growth point. Redefine 7.74%. Uh, 
So that's the dividend. That that's the key that you're wanting to buy into with these ones. Within, so now a weighted yield would be your dividend yield multiplied by your actual weight will give you what is the contribution in the actual index for that specific share, 1.41. If you add it up, you will see the weighted dividend yield that all of these companies contribute together is about 6.2%. So that's the dividend. Now, if you look at the capital, if you look at the share prices, what, what the share price has actually done in the last year, and this was like in this week, going back to April 2016 last year, the return for growth point was 2.5%. Redefine minus 10%. So the shares actually wasn't doing well, but they had dividend yield. Um, uh, so, so the weighted return of the actual share within the index is, is that column over there. And you can see if you add it up, uh, the index had more or less of minus 4.35% uh, return. But if you take what you receive from the dividend minus your, the, the capital loss, you're still, you're still uh, positive. And that's the key about these uh, listed property indexes, is this dividend yields, the income that they actually pay from it. Uh, the tiers we'll get to just now, but this is this is uh, used, uh, as I said uh, earlier, we get a lot of questions with regards to how to gear your property, etc. So we'll you come back to those sort of things. But that, in a nutshell, if I talk about the listed property index on the JSE, these would be the this, this would this is what makes up that index, and this is what we used to compare back uh, to our um, what you, to the buy to let property. If you look at this one quickly, this is this is the slide that I wanted to say was um, the, the top graph over here, this is to where the index started. It started in August 2004, and all the way, the red line is the total return index. So that is where the dividends were reinvested back into the index. Um, so that's the top one, and you can see this line, if you analyze it, now analyze what would be your return per year that you would have received, your return on this annualized um, uh, uh, on this listed property per year would have been 21% per year. Okay, everybody are happy with that? If you didn't reinvest that dividend, so every time the dividends got paid out, you took it, you didn't reinvest it back into the index, this would have been represented by the little gray line. Your annualized return on those ones would have only been 12.4%. Okay, so this is, this, is, this is what it's all about. That's why that dividends needs to be reinvested. Yes, sir. There's a tax on the, that as well, but it's a more at a more favourable uh, rate. Well, your first uh, certain percentage is is, is tax free per year. You're referring to that that sort of calculation. This this is key. This is key about this 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 whole thing. Um, just to also put it into perspective, if you had to compare this listed property index, um, th this has now become the blue line. If you also compare it to the top 40 or the or the all share index going back all the way to 2004. Then basically you would see the blue line is now the listed property, the one that returned 21% annualized per year, and the red and the grey one more or less the same, say about 17% for the top 40 uh, or the all share index um, um, over that same period. Also total return where those those shares dividends were reinvested back into it. Okay, so that's just to put it into perspective. So so that was it. So now. Um, We've got our two, um, uh, also, the, then we said, okay, we've got our two components. We've got the buy-to-let property. Um, we know now what's the what's the variables there and how we're going to calculate the returns. And then we said, okay, we've got the listed property. Now we had to find a formula to actually compare the two, to actually tell our investors what is the better investment option that you can use. So basically, there's different ways within a buy-to-let property. Return on investment is quite a, 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 a popular uh, um, a method. Uh, the other is uh, uh, arithmetic averages. We, um, but but this example just quickly shows what's the difference between an arithmetic average and a, geom um, a geometric average that we eventually used. Um, the arithmetic average. If you look at a five-year returns in the in the market, you return year one was ninety percent, ten percent, twenty, thirty, and then lastly minus ninety percent. If that was your returns over the last five years, and you took an arithmetic average, your average would have been 12%. Um, but if you took the geometric average, which is the right way of calculating, your return would actually have been minus 20%. So a massive difference in, so it's very important that you write, use the right uh, formula to actually compare the two. Um, so we, um, 
so because in finance, I mean, if you if you're in the market and you and you and you lose money one year, you've got less capital to invest the next year, which is a reality. And, and what what the geometric average annual return takes into uh, into account is that fact that yearly that you make or lose money and you have more or less to actually invest. And that's what we then said. Okay, well now we've got the variables, we can compare it, and uh, and now we can actually compare apples to apples to actually put it like that. So. Um, but it's it basically I'll just quickly walk you through it. This is what it looks like. It is a little uh, a spreadsheet like this. It's got all the variables that we've already discussed. It's got on the on the left hand side going down there the descriptions that we already discussed. Uh, the two yellow the yellow lines is there indicating the transactions cost for buying selling, and the gentleman at the back that said we left out the capital gains. That's the yellow line at the bottom there. Um, but then on the, on the columns you just basically populate. What is your actual values of the buy to let property that you want to do? So on the left-hand side, it shows the buy to let uh, variables, and on the right-hand side, well, that's the nice thing about listed property or investing in the market. It's just an annualized return that you have to populate. The one thing that we had to also include is remember in the in the transaction cost when buying or selling a property, just by buying or selling an investment, there would also be a, a transaction cost associated with that. We just for this example, we just said one percent. Uh, um, would be uh, the cost, even though uh, at Vista it's much lower, but we used 1% as the execution cost to actually buy or sell into that specific uh, listed share um, or listed property index. So this was the outcome using then all the, um, all the variables that we explained uh, between the listed property and buy to let. So over that 20 year period, uh, the buy to let property um, returned with those parameters about 18% annualized, and the listed property returned um, 21%. So that was eventually the outcome, and we said, well, for us, it's then a no-brainer. If it excludes all the risks, then that would be the better, better investment uh, way to to go. If if that's your your good your good good question, Afadi. So what what happened here was we didn't actually. On the on the so 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 the investor when he went into the buy to let property, even though the property was worth one million rand, we got the mortgage from the bank. We said he only used a hundred thousand rand of his own capital, so he used two hundred thousand. So we said then this user, therefore, when he enters the market and actually buy into listed property, we can't now all of a sudden give him a million. He only has a hundred thousand. So either we need to gear his thing. Or he's only, or he's, if, or he's only going in with a hundred thousand rand, and this analysis is only on a hundred thousand rand. So yeah, it, it was geared with the buy to let property, but with the investment, we didn't actually gear it. And it is a, and this is a question you'll see in the subsequent slides as well. But Joe, where's my sleeves? That was a good question. <laughs> Thanks. Any other questions? It was uh, the the index only started from two thousand and four. So we basically had to use what we had from the from an index point of view. So it started from 2004 up to uh, up to uh, uh, January this year, and on the buy to let it doesn't really matter. You agree? We just that's all parameterized, so you can fill in what you want to do. Uh, okay, okay. This is this is also now getting interesting. So so the question I don't know if everybody heard heard what the question is. So after 20 years now, you basically um, you own an asset. And which you can now basically sell. Okay, to to actually do the comparison, what we did on year 20 is we both we sold both assets. We sold the house that you earned, and we we sold the 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 listed property that you've now built up. Your your basically your share portfolio, whatever you've built up in the market, we actually sold the two. That's how we actually got it. There is definitely that's 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 definitely and that was what one of the ones that we said earlier. You could definitely uh, create a tax shield where you are more tax efficient. Uh, if you run it like a business, uh, your cell phone, your travel expenses, all of those sort of things. Um, but again, uh, it, it all depends on how and and all the different. It's basically the the efficiency comes in through the through the expenses that you can put through it or through the tax shield that you actually create for it. It, it it is after your expenses, so it's so so that's the nice thing, and that's also where the tax efficiency comes from. Is once, um, and that's why if if you have more than one property, 
you what you do is you you your own property for example or another project that you need you finance it of those listed of of those buy to let properties so you keep the the loan high so there's more interest expense that's going through on the properties um uh, and 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 your profit then because you can write you can you can subtract the the interest before you actually pay the income uh, a tax on it so in that way you're creating uh, capital at a very low cost for some other project or your own home or wherever you you're talking about these lists the, the, this is this is selected by FTSE and the JSC so they they the index calculators and the way they calculate it is this is their definition um, so they say it needs to be the top 20 liquid companies by full market capitalization um, so it has it's 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 according to their liquidity how often frequent they trade and then um, it has to be in those two sectors and it has to be primary listed on the JSE. So that's how they come up with the actual list. Yeah, yeah, there it is. Yeah. So we, we didn't pick anything. We just said, okay, what's, what's the most popular index on the JSE for listed property? And we used that. Yeah, so so are, you, are you asking your question is with regards to the actual, uh, so these growth point and redefine and their dividend yields are much higher than, than others. So, I mean, this is, in, 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 this is sort of the PE for, for, for listed property is that dividend yield. So it, it, it's a quality company. It's the way they run it. They can pay a higher dividend than, 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 than other companies. Um, but because it's only got a certain weighting within the index, it, it does reduce the amount of dividend that it contributes towards the index. Does that, does that sort of answer the question? Um, that might be your experience. In, in our experience, in what we saw on the, on the, uh, on the tenant prop, uh, profile network, go look at that website. They actually do analysis across the country of what is the escalation rates, and they reckon the escalation rate in last year in 2016 was about 3%. The, the way I read it was that that's, that was the increase. It, it, it was 3%. I, I mean, you can just imagine if you are a tenant in a property and you're, do you, do you push your rent up every year by 6%? Your tenant's going to take it by, by 10. <laughs> your tenant is going to tell you to take a fly. But look, I mean, yeah. Look, but I mean, it is, it, it's variable. I mean, it's every, every investor has got their own uh, um, sort of, uh, 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 parameters that they input so uh, that that's just that's exactly that's that's one of the risks that we indicated over here and the and the risk it's it's we, we sort of saw it under non-paying tenants but there's definitely it's a good point that some months you would have no tenant in there no rent we didn't even include those risks so these were some of the risks that we didn't even include but it's a it's a good point so 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 that's a good okay so let's just quick I'm just going to speak in general I'm not going to go through 20 companies but about 10 years ago I beg your pardon? Yes, Nappy, exactly. But what I just want to say in general is if you go back 10 years in, in this index or, or, or listed property in South Africa, all the properties or all the assets would have been almost South African. But if you go and look at it now, about 50% of the assets that these companies would own would be offshore. So that's a in general question. I, I, I can't tell you per share in here, but in general, about 50% of these companies' holdings are these days offshore and not in South Africa anymore. So they all around age 50%. So yeah, <laughs> here we go. <laughs> Great. <laughs> true that, true that. Any, any other questions before we go on to the next couple of, well, it doesn't really matter. I mean, we're, we're almost, uh, uh, we're, at the, we're at the general slides. Uh, is there any more questions on that? We can come back to it. Okay, yes, sir. So cool. Let's let's go into the general slides, okay? Because I think it's we, we can always go back. There's uh, there's 15 minutes left. So just quickly, um, going into this is one of the questions we often get, um, was with regards to gearing, uh, where on your buy to let property you actually geared it because you put down a hundred thousand, you got a million. How do you do it here? Um, and that's why we indicate on that list of 20 names. These are uh, on the right hand side when you get the presentation. These are the tiers on most of the tier one and twos. Uh, sometimes on the threes, you'll be able to take out a derivative, a, a contract for difference or a single stock future or one of those. Um, you would be able to take out those contracts and gear up your portfolio. You gear it up uh, on these things. You can uh, almost get 10, 15, 15 uh, percent of it. So for, for every Ten rand, you can get a hundred rand exposure. So it's very, very effective. Um, just be careful that that it does involve margin calls. So if it doesn't go in your in, in your way, just gearing in general. What what worries me a little bit about this is yes, 
on your listed property, remember you're buying into a company, that company is probably highly geared itself. So they borrowed money and they bought a, a shopping complex or a centrum or whatever. And now you are putting gearing on gearing. Um, so yeah, it's a, it, it, that is dangerous. So, but this is a question we often get, but you, so, but you can own the JSC or with your, with your institution that you trade, you can get CFDs or single stock futures to actually gear it up on those ones. Um, and then the other one, uh, something that Vista we often do is uh, what we call share-based loans. And this is where you can actually borrow against your share portfolio. On a well-diversified share portfolio, uh, you can get up to 60%. So if you've got a million rand a share portfolio, which is well-diversified into good tier one, tier two uh, shares, you can get 600,000 rand for, for that at prime. So that those interest rates come at prime. And then what you can do with the money that you borrow against your share portfolio, you can buy more of it. Uh, more shares or more property shares, etc., and that's one. That's that's the two ways that that we answer that usually with regards to how do we gear up the properties, of the listed property, um, the listed property investment ideas. Yes, uh, coming coming to the questions about. Uh, so we we uh, uh, we don't do analysis ourselves at Vista with regards to shares, but these are two of the most popular ones that I've seen in some of the banks' uh, ana analysis report. Resilient. And Green Bay, Resilience got about 50%, uh, local 50% offshore. Um, they predominantly in regional malls, so not in the cities, they're more in the regional malls and shopping centers, and they pay a good dividend. Like I said, dividend's the big thing to look out for. The other one is Green Bay Properties. Um, uh, and they, again, high dividend yield growth. They're still small. I think they're based in Mauritius or somewhere. Totally uh, offshore based, but listed on the JSE, so quite a nice rand edge with regards to it. That's just two ideas over on that side. Unit trusts, um, so if you wanted to bring it into your, your uh, retirement annuities or your, um, or your, 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 your uh, pension fund or your, your uh, unit trust investments, uh, you can use the, we, we always use from a Vista point of view, we use Prudential Enhanced SA Property Tracker Fund. That one replicates um, um, with a little bit of an enhancement, replicates that listed property index that we showed earlier. So it's one unit trust you can buy into and it replicates that index that we spoke about. Or if you want to go offshore, you can go any most of the banks, APSA, Net Group, they've all got global property feeders. So you get it on your local um, LISP, you can actually get these and, and invest into it uh, unit trust wise. Um, ETFs, uh, these were the three ideas that we just wanted to, um, you can go and invest, uh, investigate and research them yourself. But these are the three that, that, that we can look at. The first one I did add up there, again, Stanlip, uh, this, this SA Property Exchange Traded Fund, this ETF replicates, again, exactly the, the, the listed property index. So that index that we dis, uh, discussed earlier, that, that did the comparison between um, uh, uh, buy to let versus the, the listed investment, that you can, if you wanted to replicate that, just use this, the SA, uh, Stanlip SA Property Exchange. Uh, these two I like, uh, the core shares, uh, prop tracks, 10 tracks. Um, it tracks the top 10 most liquid. So, so out of that 20 shares that we saw earlier, it only tracks 10 of them, the 10 most liquid, but it also it puts a weight on the capping, uh, a cap on the weighting. So where you saw a uh, growth point almost at 20% in that index, here it's capped at 10%. All, the, all 10 shares are 10% equally weighted within that index. So that's quite a nice one to look at. And this one is also core shares. This is if you want global exposure, have a look at the S&P, uh, the, the core shares global property ETF, which tracks the S&P global property 40 index, which is developed markets, uh, um, listed properties around the world. So, so these were just a couple of ideas of, of, of ETFs, if you're interested in shares, ETFs, or, or um, uh, unit trust to actually invest in. Um, Okay, for me these days, um, there is a, a presentation is incomplete if you don't speak about the downgrade uh, uh, these days. Uh, the, um, so, so basically, what, what we did here was just two slides. One, uh, discussing sort of our views with regards to how, what, how does the downgrade affect buy to let property, and the next one is just how does downgrade affect listed property. So um, for the buy, buy to let property, um, the big psychological impact that, that the downgrades had. We, we, we're not feeling it as yet. It's going to take some time before these downgrades start kicking in. But the psychological impact would be when new homeowners 
are going to think twice before they start buying uh, into a house. Um, so they would rather rent. So, and that's a good thing for buy to let because now all of a sudden the demand for buy to let is going up, the supply is getting less. Uh, so it's a good thing for buy to let um, the, the downgrades. The second one, um, interest rate uncertainty also. So, so over time, the interest rates will be picking up. Again, uh, investors would then rather rent as opposed to buy. So again, uh, the buy to let property could benefit from there as supply decreases. Um, and the buy to let owners can actually increase their rents. Uh, the semigration to the Western Cape, it's a fact. Um, a lot of people are moving down to the Western Cape, but the work and things are still happening up here. So uh, what, what, what you can do is then also um, buy to let uh, the, the workforce. The family might move down, uh, the, the, the breadwinner commutes and uh, need a buy to let property to live in. So maybe another uh, benefit of that. Um, so, in, all in all, there might be the opportunities with, with in the buy to let market with the downgrades happening, uh, if you can stomach it. Uh, but I would recommend focus on on a high income dense areas uh, where investments are still happening, places like Melrose or Trose Bank, near Gauw train stations, things like that. Um, that's that's just in general um, from 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 a downgrade point of view. Not sure if anybody's got some other wise uh, suggestions with regard to that. Yes, mate. Uh, Please come and fetch a sleeve afterwards. That was such a good comment. <laughs> um, okay, so, so that's a good point. Any other suggestions um, with regards to the buy to let stuff? Okay, then the impact the downgrade is going to have on the listed property. Yeah, I'm a bit concerned. Rising yields obviously would mean more expensive for, for listed property companies to finance their projects and their investments. So not sure how that's going to pan out. Uh, less disposable income for consumers. I mean, it's a fact uh, the consumer is going to have less money in his pocket. The first thing that's going to get hit is the shopping centers, the malls. Um, these are the big investment things, as you saw, for those listed property companies. So as soon as these malls and, 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 and shopping centers start getting hit. So that's not a good thing uh, over there. Psychological impact, again, investors very cautious to invest in, in, in property in South Africa or list property in South Africa. Not a good thing. Uh, the weaker currency, yeah, you have to think about it because, it, it, like we said, it's company specific. Some of the companies, and we heard earlier, we heard names like NEP, uh, those sort of companies, if they've got total offshore exposure, a weaker rand is good for them. If they've got uh, local exposure, a weaker rand is not good for them. So make sure you take into account the underlying assets or the exposure that your listed property investment actually has to the market. And... Um, and, and that would be then uh, the way to invest it. Um, great stuff. Uh, these are the articles. Uh, like I said, um, um, this is uh, some of the articles that we've written for Vista. We discussed the one on the right-hand side. Uh, my business partner, Rupert, also wrote one that's also very interesting. Uh, why I invest in uh, enlisted property, basically explaining the, the dividend yield. Um, they, we had a couple of hard copies. There's, there's hard copies and contact details and all of us on the table right at the back. If you want to, if you want to take a hard copy or, or, um, uh, of the, or if there's any left, I'm not sure if there's any left, uh, our contact details, all of that's uh, at the back there. Um, please drop us a mail. Alternatively, there's a list that circulates. If you just want to put your name on the list, we, is it at the back now? Thanks, Simon. Then you could just put your name on there. And what we'll do is the spreadsheet. We couldn't show you the actual model tonight, but we've done it. Uh, we're quite happy to mail it to you. Any feedback, comments that we have, we actually use it for the real life experiences we had with clients approaches us with decisions making between what sort of to invest in. So we would really appreciate any input or feedback with regards to that spreadsheet and the way we do our models. I do. <laughs> Yeah, so, so I, um, I, I do, but I've been, I've been selling them off. But uh, yeah, it, uh, I do. It, it, like I said, South Africans, I was just fascinated about the whole thing. And, and, and before you also start knowing the markets and things like that. So I don't want to give away my age, but I did buy most of them in the late 90s, early 2000s. So yeah, so I do. I'm guilty. <laughs> <laughs> So it will, it will, it will, it's a good, it's a great question as well. And a statement, it, it, it becomes different once the property is paid off and, and that's your point. Then you have this asset that is bringing income. So then what you need to do is remember the listed, the listed property was actually all along that like, like that. 
then you would just have to say, okay, what is my dividend yield that I'm receiving on my on my listed property? What is my yield that I'm receiving on my asset over here? And which one is the better one? So it's a quite an easy calculation, and it's very specific to your own thing like that again. So yeah, just say, what am I receiving? What's it worth? What am I receiving for it? So basically, what's the yield compared to what can I get from a listed property or a um, investment on on the market? If you hadn't had a sleeve already, I would have given you another one. Yeah, I got a question. Can I have a sleeve? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and the last point, of course, the ETFs can go into a tax-free account. Um, there's yeah. limits and, and there's, there's issues around that, but yeah. nonetheless. We, we're going to park it there because we're bunching time. Uh, let's go back to slide to the contact details. I'm sure Magnus will stay around for a couple of minutes yeah. to take more questions. Video will be online tomorrow uh, at justonelab.com table back there there's still some articles left and if you drop your contact details down uh magnus will send you things what i love most is that you finally proved what i've been saying for 20 years i knew yeah. it to be right but i never bothered to go and do the math because that looked like a lot of hard work and yeah. i'm a lazy man from durban i don't do a lot of hard work uh ladies and gents to you all thank you very much for this evening uh magnus to you thank, thank you very very much we're we'll back again here 8 of june uh, and as i said i think it's 26 may I'll be in Cape Town, but we will webcast and do the video. Everyone, thanks very much for your time. Travel safe. Cheers. Yeah.